All right, y'all, so I have the world's most adorable story to share with you. Chris Christie tells New Hampshire crowd only he can topple Donald Trump. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie boasted to an audience in New Hampshire this week that unlike other potential 2024 presidential candidates, he is not afraid of standing up to ex-president Donald Trump. Christie, speaking at St. Anselm College in Goffstown on Monday, burnished his credentials for opposing Trump by referring to his exchange with Senator Marco Rubio during a presidential debate in Florida in, excuse me, in February 2016, when he assailed the Florida Republican as an inexperienced politician. When Rubio stumbled over an answer and repeated himself twice, Christie said sarcastically, there it is, the memorized 25-second speech. I remember that moment. That was a glorious moment. It was very fun to watch little Marco get obliterated. When Rubio stumbled over an answer and repeated himself twice, oh, I already read that part. Christie, who ended up dropping out of the 2016 race a week after the debate and endorsing Trump, told the, the college crowd, you better have somebody on that stage who can do to Trump what I did to Marco because that's the only thing that's going to defeat Donald Trump. And that means you have to be fearless because he will come back and write at you. Interesting. Christie suggested that other 2024 hopefuls, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley, who has declared her candidacy and expected rivals Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and ex-Vice President Mike Pence, lack the backbone to call Trump out. Quote, because it's not going to end nicely no matter what, Christie said of a race against Trump, his end will not be a calm and quiet conclusion. Despite Christie's debate highlight with Rubio, the former governor came in sixth in New Hampshire's primary with just 7% of the vote. Christie went on to advise Trump and served on the White House transition team until he was replaced by Pence. The ex-New Jersey governor and Trump had a falling out over the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol. Christie has been a critic of the former president since. He knocked Trump on Monday for telling voters in recent speeches that he would be their retribution, accusing the former president of leading Republicans down a sinkhole of anger and retribution. Donald Trump said a couple weeks ago, I am your retribution. Guess what, everybody? No thanks. No dice, Christie said. He doesn't want to be my retribution. That's baloney. The only person he cares about is him. So let me, let me explain to you guys what's, what's really going on here. Because, I mean, obviously... What, like, the title of this article, what, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, that, what, Chris Christie really thinks he's going to beat Donald Trump? Like, you really think you can win the Republican primary and maybe become president? Um, I don't think that's actually what's going on here. I don't know if Chris Christie's that dumb. He might be. He might be, in which case, LOL, that's hilarious, right? But what's really going on here is a lot of personal politics that is now bubbling over. So, you guys might not know this backstory, but... Chris Christie was one of the um, favorites to be Donald Trump's vice president. He was on the short list. In fact, many thought he had already, Trump had already made the decision to put Chris Christie as his vice president. Uh, Christie probably thought that as well. And then at the last minute, um, he was axed. And of course, Mike Pence was put there. Now, why? Why was he axed? Well, Chris Christie actually locked up Jared Kushner's dad for, I don't know, some sort of business fraud he did, real estate fraud, something like that. Um, and, you know, Kushner held a grudge over that and told Trump, like, don't pick this guy for your VP. Never, never in a million years. And so Trump basically stabbed Christie in the back when it was already sort of assumed that at the very least he would be in the administration, but he may have even been on the brink of being VP. And so Christie went from having a political future in the White House um, from you know, either being VP or having some high-level important position to just being nowhere, being ousted from politics completely. And Chris Christie, as you all know, that dude can hold a grudge. Remember the whole Bridgegate scandal? So this guy, is he's willing to get, go as low as low can be to get back at you. And so now what it looks like, what it looks like to me is this. Chris Christie might run a kamikaze campaign to just try to take down Trump. Like, not trying to win, but he's just going to hammer Trump relentlessly on the debate stage. And um, look, it'll be interesting if he does that to see the impact of that, because it is true. When Chris Christie ran for president in 2016, he ran an abysmal campaign. Why? He listened too much to his staffers who told him, hey, man, you got to reel it in. You can't be that like loudmouth asshole guy that you were as governor of New Jersey where you'd make headlines because you were yelling at some 
teacher's union head or something. Like, you can't do that. It's not going to fly. It's not going to work. But what those staffers didn't understand is that in, in the current Republican Party, that, that does work. And that's why, uh, you know, Chris Christie's best moment was when he obliterated little Marco and called him out. And um, if he had sort of let it fly from day one, he definitely would have done better in the election than he did. He would have definitely finished better than sixth or whatever it was in New Hampshire. And so it'd be interesting because it seems like he's hinting to everybody, why, like, why are you in New Hampshire? Why are you giving this speech? It seems like he's interested in launching a presidential run. And, I mean, maybe he thinks it's a long shot, I'll win or whatever, but I think it's pretty clear he wants to run a kamikaze campaign against Trump and just vociferously argue against Donald Trump and make him um, regret that he ever stabbed him in the back. And we look, guys, we don't know what it's like having people who really go no holds barred against Trump because nobody ever did. Jeb Bush didn't have the sauce. Marco Rubio didn't have the sauce. You know, and Chris Christie never turned his guns on Trump in the 2016 race because he thought he'd have a position in the administration. So what's it going to look like when you have at least one person going all in against Trump and really trying to take him down? Now, look, it'll be Chris Christie getting the booze at the Republican debate, but as we've seen previously, that doesn't really mean much in the debate hall if you're getting booze, because Trump used to get booze all the time when he would go after Jeb and say, that's his donors in the audience. He would get booed. He got booed at a number of Republican debates, and he still won. So in other words, my point is Christie can dump on Trump in debates and actually impact his poll numbers, even though, you know, he might get booze in the room over it. So I don't know, man. It's, it'd be interesting to see. It, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Chris Christie has no chance of actually winning a Republican primary, um, but you know, can he have an impact and can he take Trump down a couple notches and, and create a bigger lane for DeSantis? That's very, very possible. Interesting development, if you ask me. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.